What's going on guys? It's Seema Wrong Channel. Good YouTube and welcome to the house. I promise that I have Simo's express permission to use this segment today. And we were talking about how good Wavering Eyes is. First, let's go over the card and what it does and then everything that you're going to get out of it. Wavering Eyes' first two effects are self-reliant. You can place your own scales and make these effects happen. You don't have to rely on your opponent being a Pendulum Duelist or playing some kind of a mirror match in order to gain these. Destroy as many cards in each player's pendulum zones as possible, and then you apply these effects in sequence depending on the number of cards destroyed by this effect. So this is important because no matter what, you can destroy your own pendulum scales and pendulum magicians and many other pendulum cards. They get effects when they are destroyed, even as a scale due to their monster effects and the resolution being able to activate. The first effect not the biggest deal. Yeah, yeah, inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent, but this can actually rack up. This can make many situations where Pendulum Magicians can deal out and dish 7,800 damage due to all their battle tricks. Game. The second effect is you can add one Pendulum Monster from your main deck to your hand. This is the most important effect, and there's going to be a drawback to this effect later that we're going to talk about for this quick play spell. But... Being a reactive spell does so much in the deck, and these are the two effects that you can rely on yourself to be able to play scales and get at any time. The other important thing about this being a quick play is it can activate to your opponent's spell and trap effects, such as Cosmic Cyclone, that might be busting you up for having scales. Now, the third and fourth effect you're only going to gain in mirror matches or pendulum matches. Three or more, you can banish one card on the field. Non-targeting banishing, I hear that is pretty nice. The fourth effect, you can add a Wavering Eyes card from your deck to the hand. So if you're getting the all-powerful hit four, you're getting another copy of this already broken card. Now let's get into what you can be using this with. Double Iris Magician is the main one that comes to mind because it can tutor out either your Time Pendulum Graph or your Star Pendulum Graph cards. Now, Star Pendulum Graph is actually an extra use with this because if you have just one scale and... Uh, you're able to use it to resource something back, Star Pendulum Graph is going to search you a Pendulum Magician. Now, it's even better, of course, if you have two scales, because then you're getting two searches. Wavering will get you any Pendulum Monster from your deck, and Star Pendulum Graph will add you a Magician card. And like we said, we have, we have our Iris Magician here that's going to be allowing you to resource back other cards such as these pendulum graph cards that are very important but you also have things like black fang magician that'll be reviving monsters from the grave in the later game now we move on forward to our other pendulum graph card which is time pendulum graph and there are some insanely intricate things that you can do with this now if i activate my time pendulum graph card here and then i chain wavering eyes my target on my side of the field for time pendulum graph leaves time pendulum graph targets one of your own magician pendulum either monsters or in scale cards and one of your opponent's cards and will destroy both but if one of your targets leaves the field before the resolution of this, you're able to non-targeting send one card on the field to the graveyard. So if you chain wavering to Time Pendulum Graph and your scale leaves the Time Pendulum Graph was targeting, you are now capable of using it in order to get a non-targeting send in tandem with Wavering Eyes. Now another important card that came back to two with Wavering Eyes is Luster Pendulum. Luster Pendulum is going to do something very important that both of these cards feared at one point, and that's Ash Blossom. Now chaining Wavering Eyes to Ash Blossom when you use Luster is not going to resolve Luster's effect. It's leaving the field. But Luster is going to be able to bait Ash Blossom and many times because they'll think they're scale locking you. It's very rare that they're going to save it for the Wavering's eyes itself in these situations. But, in case they do, you should be aware that Wavering Eyes, if it is gaining its second effect, can be completely negated by Ash Blossom, just like the days of old of Damage Juggler. Now, Luster Pendulum here is huge for other decks. This is where we get into the, the point that, hey, you know what? This is not just about the Pendulum Magicians. Guiding Ariande is here with Double Luster, an actual buff to counter fairies. This was insane. I'm sure Alenteo is so happy here, but Guiding Ariande 
locking up a scale can be a good or a bad thing. If you're playing counter traps that rely on guiding Ariande, then you want her in scale. But if you have a guiding Ariande and Luster in scale, you're only able to place three face downs. So with Luster, you can already search another copy of guiding Ariande. Now using Wavering Eyes here, you're able to clear your scales and get yet either another copy of Luster or Guiding Ariande, and you can set up for the third, or you can place four back row and one scale that's Guiding Ariande, so all your counter traps are free. Wavering is just doing so much for the Pendulum decks. Who would have thought that this was an actual potential buff? to counter fairies. But if you think it's inconsistent, your only scales are luster and guiding, you may want to avoid this card, but it does free your scales up really nice to have four back rows. Now, the next card I want to talk about that's very good for this comes from Harmonizing Magician. Harmonizing Magician is a tuner in your deck that when it's pendulum summoned and cannot be pendulum summoned from extra deck, so this has to be your hand, it will be summoning any magician monster to your field, but that monster you're bringing out will be banished when it leaves the field. And we had a few good synchro options before here with Omega and Ignister, two very powerful plays. Going first, you could take a card out of their hand and then continue your setup freeing your extra monster zone under master rule four. Ignister with double luster now has things to bring to the field more consistently to get to pop and shuffle for free. But the card that I really like with Wavering that makes Wavering even more busted and was already really good in Pendulum Magicians in my opinion is Enlightenment Paladin. He finally has a great spell to get back. Before it was pretty much like Pot of Desires and you don't want to banish 10 a second time usually. But if this card was Synchro Summoned using a Magician Pendulum Monster as a material, you can target a spell card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Oh man, so you can not only use Wavering Eyes earlier in the turn, and even if it got negated, if your Pendulum Summoning out Harmonizing, it's a one-card Enlightenment that gets you this. Now, Enlightenment has some other awesome tricks that will actually stack on top of that Wavering Eyes 500 burn, because you're able to, whenever it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack. Does it, does it sound like that 7800 situation's coming up a lot more now? Using your cards such as Purple Poison and Black Fang Magician, you're able to half their attacks. You're able to use uh, Purple Poison to boost this 1200 in the damage. And you're also able to use Double Iris to make this do double damage. There's so many times when Enlightenment Paladin will be dealing over 5000, especially if you have Kaiju'd them, that this will come in clutch over and over. That 500 will not only matter, but you're going to be able to tutor this back to your hand and do another 500 at worst but of course the best case scenario is you're searching alongside it there are so many intricacies to this mirror match as well being able to know that you're in the mirror match means that instead of proactively using it to tutor your deck you're going to be able to set up with a wavering in your back row and a time star magician time star magician has an ability to be both a defense against wavering and an offense with it so basically you can psych out your opponent and save your scales from wavering because it has the effect of once per turn if a pendulum monster card or cards in your monster zone or pendulum zone would be destroyed by battle or card effect you can send a spellcaster type monster from your deck to the graveyard and set any spellcaster that might prove some interesting things thanks to wavering eyes because now you're turning on time star magician faster than ever and you know purple Purple Poison is able to destroy cards, but more importantly here, Black Fang Magician is going to be reviving what Time Star sends to the graveyard. It's pretty nice. So, basically, you're able to use Time Star Magician in order to set up your defensive block. You're able to stop a Wavering Eyes with it. Used to, it, this would only come into play when we were using it with our uh, Time Pendulum Graph. You would use Time Star Magician to protect the scale, similar to the Wavering Eyes situation we gave before. And that does bring me to my final point here. You're going to be playing this card very differently when you know you're up against a Pendulum deck. Usually that's going to be game two and three, but late rounds in a YC or top cut, you should know who you're playing against and what they're playing. It's very similar to the Mermail Atlantean situation where if you know they're playing Mermail Atlanteans, game one you make a dweller and it's very good. Well, with Wavering Eyes, instead of using it proactively in the mirror to toolbox your deck out, 
you're probably going to use it if you have the resources available to start countering your opponent during their turn rather than using it to toolbox out your own deck. It does have those very nice and beefy third and fourth scale of destruction effects that you will want to be using in the mirror match and to also be using it for quick play disruption. Now this might seem like a no-brainer but you are going to have hands where you still have to use it going first rather than keeping it to play against them. But do keep in mind, Enlightenment Paladin is always an option there to give it back. And even if they know it's there, sometimes they can't deal with it. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this discussion. I know that you usually have SEMO for these. It's basically a pretty long tech update on a card that comes out. But this card is just so busted and there's so many intricacies that I wanted to play just from grazing the surface of playing this in Dueling Book Rated and versus my friends in the Pendulum Mirror last night that we started to notice that I had to talk about this card. So a huge thanks to Simo for letting me borrow the segment. I could just gush on about this forever, but I'm going to leave it for the comment section and you guys. Tell me if there's anything I missed, any cool interactions that you guys have seen being used in the Pendulum Mirror that I didn't discuss here because I definitely want to hear more about this this is probably my deck of choice moving forward it may not be the best deck but it's the deck that i have the most fun with and it does hit home on a competitive level thanks for watching guys